Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Get ready to have an embolism. Three weeks ago, House Oversight had this hearing with actual Twitter executives who had actual firsthand knowledge about what happened in 2020. And that didn't go so well for the House Republicans because real evidence showed that there wasn't coordination between Twitter and the federal government. The Twitter files are real evidence. They are emails that show correspondence between the FBI and the executives at Twitter, including Yoel Roth, who was the head of the trust and safety team. They just have no response to it. And so the only other thing that they can do is try and discredit the journalists who reported on the story. As they'd like the American people to believe, and that all the so-called Twitter files really showed was a discussion on content moderation <laughs> and that we only got a fraction of the discussion. Well, you got the fraction that showed the collaboration between the FBI and the executives at Twitter. I just, I can't help but see the parallels here between the January 6th footage and her complaint that the Twitter files didn't release enough files. So in the January 6th case, the media, the government, all showed the American public just a very tiny slice, a cherry-picked slice of that video. They didn't show the video of the 120,000 people who were peaceful. And, you know, that's another thing about all that is that there were 120,000 people there. Out of that, around 300 have been charged with violent crimes, fighting with police. And then there were like 900 people that were charged with trespassing. So it really was mostly peaceful. But for the most part, the American public doesn't have that perception because the Democrats and their state media cherry picked videos to disseminate to the public. So now we're back again. No surprise. What else have they got to talk about? <laughs> not what's interested in the American people are interested, not what taxpayer dollars have brought us here to Washington to do. Yeah, the Democrat is not at all interested in talking about exposed corruption that implicates her party. This isn't just a matter of what data was given to these so-called journalists before us now. <laughs> she just said so-called journalists. Uh, Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger are both longtime career journalists. I mean, Matt Taibbi up until he started exposing Democrats, was well known as a left-wing journalist. Same thing with Barry Weiss and Michael Schellenberger. All these people were always considered journalists up until the point they started exposing Democrats. The member of the government doesn't get to pick and choose who is and isn't a journalist. The entire point of journalism is to hold people like her to account, to hold power to account. Journalists are literally anybody who is an American citizen because the First Amendment guarantees every U.S. citizen a right to free speech, uh, the right to protest, and that includes the right to a free press. My name is Matt Taibbi. I've been a reporter for 30 years uh, and a staunch advocate of the First Amendment. Much of that time was spent at Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, ranking member Plaskett, um, I'm not a so-called journalist. Uh, I've won the National Magazine Award, the I.F. Stone Award for Independent Journalism. She's not even listening. And I've written 10 books, including oh, four the... New York Times books. New York Times bestseller. <laughs> uh, I'm now the editor bee. of the online magazine Racket on the independent platform. Sub <laughs> that is just unreal. He's sitting there. She called him a, a, a so-called journalist. He starts explaining his credentials, which goes back 30 years. And this is what she's doing. She's just talking, ignoring, not paying any attention, showing utter contempt for these journalists. And why is she so angry? What is, what is she, like, just look at her. She looks so unhappy and depressed. Why? Like, what about this story makes her so angry? It's because her party gets exposed. It is, it is, it is exposed that the Democrats worked with the media and the government to suppress their political opposition and sway the election in their favor. Now, this is where things get really crazy because she starts trying to dig for the sources of this story. Why would you, you know, why would she want to know that? What we should be talking about is the corruption that was exposed and the fact that the government essentially got involved in an election and using suppression and censorship swayed it in, fa in favor of Biden. But of course, that's why they want to cover this up. They can't, they can't let that come out that that happened. The narrative is that it's the Republicans who are a threat to democracy, not them. Emails did Mr. Musk give you access to? I mean, we... We, we went through thousands of emails. Did he give you access to all? There's no way that. That's probably closer. Probably, yeah. probably close to 100,000. Only 338 of those 100,000 emails. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. And then who gave you access to these emails? Um, who was the individual that uh, gave you permission to access the emails? Well, the attribution from my story is sources at Twitter, and that's what I'm going to refer to. Okay. 
Uh, did Mr. Musk contact you, Mr. Taibbi? Again, She's still digging for sources. My story is sources at Twitter. Yeah. Mr. Schellenberger, did Mr. Musk contact you? Uh, actually, no. I was brought in by my friend Barry Weiss, and so this story, there's been a lot of misinformation. Yeah. Mr. Weiss or brought you in. Mr. Taibbi, yeah. Ms. Weiss, thank you. Mr. Yeah. Taibbi, have you had conversations with Elon Musk? I have. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tybee, did Mr. Musk what is place this any questioning? conditions on the would use the of the email? Would the gentle lady yield for a second? Like, what country uh, are we as in? As long as my time is not used. Are you, are you trying to get journalists? No, I'm not trying to get sources. No, I'm yes, not. she is. I am asking, like no, well, what if you let me finish. What in the world? Are you, and you had conversations with him. Not You said you weren't going to uh, agree to who your sources were. I'm not asking you your source. I'm asking you if you had conversations. She's absolutely asking for the source. And I just want you all to remember, back during the Trump years, anytime Trump or Fox or anybody really criticized the media, what did they say? They said that that was a threat to democracy. They said that it put them in danger. I remember Brian Stelter said that Fox News was leading a hate campaign against journalists. What do you call this? This is actual power using, tr attempting to use their power to silence journalists who are trying to hold them accountable. So now you're going to see this Democrat try and make the argument that you're not allowed to hold Democrats and the government accountable because people threaten them and they supposedly get threats. It's really similar to what we've been hearing from the media and Democrats concerning the January 6th tapes. Nobody's allowed to see these hidden videos because it puts them in danger. It's their security threats, which seems to be their kind of go to when it comes to justifying the suppression of information they don't want the public getting of homophobic and anti-Semitic threats and harassment against right. me, of which Twitter has removed vanishingly little, and following the Daily Mail's decision to publish where I live, ultimately I had to leave my home and sell it. Those are the consequences for this type of online harassment and speech. Okay, we're talking the people who are now going to make the argument that free speech of their opponents should be silenced because people threaten them are the very same people who were cheering on the release of the addresses of SCOTUS judges and the media who said it was no big deal that these people were parked outside judges' homes threatening them, which eventually led to a guy actually trying an assassination attempt on Judge Kavanaugh. So those people are now going to make the argument that you're not allowed to expose them and their corruption because they get threats. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I'm not exaggerating when, when I say that you have called before you two witnesses who pose a direct threat to people who oppose them. <laughs> Did you hear that? A Democrat politician, a member of the government, just called two journalists a threat. A threat because of the story and who it exposed. You're not allowed to expose us. You're not allowed to expose what Twitter executives did because it is a threat to them. That is very significant because she's the one with the power. And now the only reason that she's saying that is as a justification to silence them. That's the justification you're gonna to use to silence all of us. And they're gonna go far beyond that at some point. Eventually, they're gonna start rounding us up and throwing us in jail. Now, I know you're out there saying, Ryan, that's crazy. There's no way that's gonna happen. You're just, you're just being nuts. No, I'm telling you, the reason that these, uh, the reason they're saying these crazy things is because in their heads, they already know what they wanna do, but they gotta justify it somehow. It's funny when people have to go through that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you're fucking funny. This is unacceptable. I'm ready for no, it. No, you're unacceptable. I don't know if a lot of other people are. But just as it was unacceptable for Kevin McCarthy. Like, the, the lack of self-awareness here is just mind-blowing. Because right now, she's the one with the power. She's sitting up there with power, looking down on these journalists who really have no power. And she's telling them, you're a threat. You're a threat because you're doing journalism that I don't like. Like, okay, so we apply your standard that you're using right now to yourself. And now you're the threat. I mean, isn't that how this works? No. <laughs> I mean, that's how it works in objective reality, but it doesn't work that way for her because outside of us and Fox News, there's really nobody to hold her to that standard. But just as it was unacceptable for Kevin McCarthy to provide 41,000 hours of sensitive security footage to a biased <laughs> talking head in an effort to rewrite what happened on January 6th. <laughs> This is a new Republican playbook, apparently. Mr. Risk Chairman. American safety and security Hang Hang to on. score political points. So he, you see, it's the same thing. It's just like you can't expose us because we get threats from it. You can't expose Boston Children's Hospital, who put out videos saying that they do uh, uh, hysterectomies and gender surgeries on minors. They said it right there in the video. 
But then if you report on that, then you're putting them in danger. And now you can't see the footage that they want to keep hidden from you because somehow it's a security threat. And anybody who does try to expose it, well, they just want you to die. I mean, this goes back to Obamacare. And when Democrats and the media were saying Republicans want you to die because they opposed Obamacare. What did that lead to? That led to a domestic terrorist attack on Republican senators by a guy who shouted, this is for health care while he shot at them. And these same people now are saying that you can't expose us, you can't report on us, you can't do any of this stuff because it is a security threat. Folks, I got to tell you, this is the actual threat to democracy. You got these people who literally want to criminalize their political opposition. They want to criminalize, criminalize the speech of their political opponents. They want to censor and shut you up and then just use your imagination to what happens after that because I'm telling you, we are on that road. We are heading down it. The media does not spend every waking moment characterizing their political opponents, Republican Party, as an actual terrorist organization, which has been said multiple times across the media. They're not doing that for no reason. All right, lastly now, we have Jim Jordan's response to all of this nonsense, and you're going to love it. The American 11 people to see, consent decree. You don't want the American people to see what happened, the full video, transparency. You don't want that, and you don't want two journalists who have been named personally by the Biden administration, FTC, Boom. in a letter. The Biden administration. And you're saying is they're here the to help FTC. us. They're here to tell their story. And frankly, I think they're brave individuals for being willing to come after they've been named in a letter from the Biden FTC. Hell is yeah. this your question time now? No, I'm responding to your ridiculous oh. statements you made <laughs> in your in your opening statement. Okay, well let's get yes. on with it. Oh, now we want to get on with it. So you I can did. say all the things you want. I, point I did out in my exactly. opening statement as well as you facts. had an opening statement. You said what you needed to say in your opening statement, and I, as the ranking member, have Without used objection, my time. Without objection, all other opening statements will be included in the record. All right, that was pretty good, but not the ownage I was talking about. Remember back when Stacy was claiming that there's no evidence in the Twitter files showing any kind of collusion between big tech and the government? Well, another one of the Democrats makes that dubious claim, and Jim Jordan just unloads. About Twitter. Twitter. And even with Twitter... You cannot find actual evidence of any direct government censorship of any lawful speech. Not and true. When I say lawful, I mean non not at all criminal true. speech because plenty I'll of give you speech one. is non criminal. I'll give you one. The gentleman's time to expire. I'd ask unanimous <laughs> consent Here to enter go. into the record the following email from Clark Humphrey, <laughs> yes. Executive Office of the Presidency, White House Office, January 23rd, 2021. That's the Biden administration, 4.39 a.m. Hey, folks. This goes to um, Twitter. Hey, folks. Wanted to use the term Mr. Mr. He used, they used the term Mr. Mr. Goldman just used. Wanted to flag the below tweet and I'm wondering if we can get moving on the process for having it removed ASAP. Boom. That is you read the <laughs> below tweet. And then if we can keep an eye out for tweets that fall in this same genre, uh, genre that would be great. This is a tweet on ve the very issue that Ma uh, Thomas uh, can you just, brought. For the fullness of the record, can you re re uh, read the, because I've not seen this. But this was in the Twitter the files, folks. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. With me, but the There's more examples. Ones, tell us, you said no time did government try to tell uh, Twitter to take that, to explicitly remove something. And No, I said says, explicitly remove lawful speech. Lawful great. speech. We're going to conflate. The First Amendment does not is not absolute. Twitter, this is something oh. from Robert Kennedy Jr. <laughs> <laughs> so it I, is I lawful speech. Lawful point speech. of order, Mr. Chair. This is unreal. Because Robert Kennedy Jr. Just said it. That's why it's lawful speech. Just a minute, Mr. Goldman. Goldman. Unreal. But all I'm Mr. saying Mr. is you Chair? said no, no time did the government speech. explicitly First say to take it down. Here I, we have when people it, say things I don't like. They couldn't even wait two days. Two days into this administration, they were asked Twitter to Mr. take something Chair. down, and we will get you the underlying tweet. Thank With you. that, I recognize the gentlelady from New York. If, if, will you place it into the record as well? Brilliant. Please? The underlying tweet. Robert Kennedy Jr. Uh, is talking about, uh, he's talking about Hank Aaron's death after he received the vaccine. That's what Oh. Oh, that's not lawful speech. Hank Aaron, it's having an opinion about Hank Aaron's death after the vaccine, that's not lawful speech according to Democrats. Well, folks, that's about all my brain can take of that. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, hit that like button, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And then, as always, make sure to leave a comment to vent some of those frustrations. Thanks a lot. I'll see you all in the next one.